fails, some ups and downs. But you definitely just, it only matters if you keep pushing and keep trying. Hey guys, what's up? Today in this video, we're going to chat with Kendall again. And if you missed the previous video, I'll put that up there. The audio wasn't that great, but it was some good info where he actually was getting ready to start or actually just started a and school. It was pretty uh, more in the beginning. But now today he has completed school and we're going to chat about his experience and ask a few questions about that. So let's bring on Kendall and let's get right to it. All right, Kendall, welcome. And how's it going today? I guess let's just start with that. How's uh, it's Saturday morning here? And uh, so, how's it going, man? So, um, thanks for having me. You know, for part two. And um, today is going it's going pretty well today. You know, um, just getting some relaxed time and preparing for the new work week. Yeah, it's awesome. So, so you just completed school, and how long ago was that? You just completed, I guess, all your tests and everything, and uh, you're ready to obviously you move forward and got a job opportunity to come up, which we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. So um, pretty much, yes, I did uh, complete uh, school back into back in, uh, let's say, back in December. And I I, just, I did get my airframe license. So towards the written test, you know, I passed the airframe in general since the last time we spoke. And at the moment, just pretty much working on my power plant license at this point. Okay. All right, cool. So what I have a couple questions here for you that a lot of people ask, you know, they're searching online, they're looking for, you know, opportunities, aircraft maintenance, you know, should they attend a school? Should they look for like a apprentice opportunity? I guess my question to you is, did you choose a school because that was your number one choice? Or was that uh, the option you had available as far as, you know, not having an apprentice option? Um, I guess, how, why did you choose a school and, um, yeah, exactly what led to that decision? So, um, so for someone like me, like I didn't really have any experience or any really interest in the aviation field. So for me choosing my school, it was pretty straightforward. Um, I had a buddy that actually went to a school, Aviation Institute of Maintenance. And so I kind of did my research on that school solely. So that's just the route coming for me personally, where I, why I decided to just go to school route. Okay. So a next question, we'll just try to get through this and kind of get some good information to people that are um, interested and, you know, clicked on this video and want to know more about aircraft maintenance as far as going into that field. Um, what are a couple of things that you liked about the school option? And if you don't mind, maybe share something that you wish was actually a little better because, um, you know, there are pros and cons for the, you know, the apprentice side of things along with the school. But your experience with the school, what's something that you really liked and something that you wish that may have been a little different? So something that I really liked going the school route and not really the apprentice route. Uh, of course, with the apprentice route, you would have definitely experience of uh, people that's in the field on a job. But for me going the school route, I felt that, of course, you still have the uh, teachers that have that had the AMPs and they was in the field for a good amount of years and now became a teacher. So for me, it was getting that um, that older experience from the guys that were in the field for such a long time and now passing it on to us younger guys. And they actually was willing, having teachers, they're actually willing to stay late hours with you, like even if like out of jobs out of a job being an apprentice, like you kind of much really have that, that learning experience while you're at, only at work. So uh, being at school, I felt that I still had that option for later hours more than I required for myself to have that one on one studying session for, with teachers. So that was a big plus for me going to school route. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, if you can do after hours, you know, additional you know, I guess discussions because, you know, when you do go to work, you know, and it's time to go home, I don't think you're going to be, well, maybe some people, but it's not typical to, you know, work after hours on your own time, you know, after, you know, the shop's closed to gain more experience. So, so, I mean, that, that's, 
sounds like a good opportunity to have that. Um, is there something that, you know, I'm really curious myself, you know, I haven't really asked this question um, to really, really any students, you know, what's something that I know every school is different, but from your experience with the school you went to, um, I don't think it's a bash on them, but if there was something that you wish was better, um, I'm sure they would even like to hear it as well. I mean, is there something that comes to mind that, you know, um, could have been a little better that you would like to see? Really? Uh, so I can say everything depends on which campus and which state you're in. You know, some may have better equipment, some may have, you know, not so good equipment, but at the end of the day, you learn to work with what what you get and what opportunities they provide at the campus you're at. So for my campus, you know, I could say there could have been, you know, more things working better. But as you see, I graduated, so I, was, I still was able to make it work with the resources the school provided. So the oral and practical, I guess, for the airframe, what would you say to a guy or gal that was looking to prep for a test, you know, an airframe, or even a, a power plant, but just the oral and practical side of things, um, how did that go? And would you have any maybe advice for somebody that is looking to do that here soon? So my advice would be um, the Jefferson would be my number one advice to uh, invest in that book for your orals. If it's written, you can, you know, you can, it could go hand in hand with ASA or Jefferson. That's your preference. But for orals, sure. I would say strictly use Jefferson or even for the matter, you know, have a talk with your DME and see what material he may suggest, you know, that mm -hmm. would be a better option. Cause I went both options. I did Jefferson and I actually, you know, took time out to speak with my DME and asked them, you know, what would be the better material that I should cover with you as a personal DME? Cause every DME can be different. Yeah. What material that they may use. Okay. Yeah. So how was, how was your experience with your personal experience, I guess, for the Orem practical? Yeah. How did it go? Was it, um, like you anticipated it or is it easier or harder i mean how was i guess your personal experience with it at your location um i pretty much was you know definitely worried about the oral and practical but more so worried about the oral because you can't really get to the practicals without getting past the oral so i would say for anyone if, if they're stretching the practicals you know you have two days for uh unless you your dme may do it in everything in one day the oral and practical, but you definitely have two days where one day would be the oral and one day would be the practical. So I would say, don't worry about the practicals. Definitely, you know, it's, you should be worried about it. Of course, it's something new, but also you should want to focus on your orals first, since that's the first thing you have to get out the way before the practicals. Um, but mine was in one day, but again, it was the aura was first. And then you went out to the hangar and you, you know, demonstrated a few things and you actually walked around the aircraft and did that part. So that makes sense. Just focus on that side first. And uh, then the rest would just kind of follow, I guess, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because okay. once you see, you, uh, I, for me personally, once I saw that, you know, I definitely got the uh, auras out the way. I, I got a little more comfortable heading into the practicals, which made me a little more a little more relaxed headed into the practical side of things. Yeah. Uh, right now, I really want to know more about the job opportunity that you're actually starting this coming Monday. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. So um, the job opportunity, I was, I, I was actually able to land uh, for a helicopter company called Leonardo Helicopter okay. under Augusta Airways. And my role would pretty much be um, mechanical assembler. And, you know, I only have my airframe at the moment, but definitely no matter if you have your airframe or power plant, you should still be out there looking, whether you have both or you just have one, because there's definitely still opportunities out there and companies willing to work with you and help you get that last portion of, of things. Um, so how far is this place away from your where you live right now? Is it much of a commute or how's that look? So um, it's pretty much on school grounds since my, oh, really? uh, okay. yeah, because my um, school is actually on the, uh, it's on the airport. So, and they have a bunch of different companies that work on that airport site as well. So it's not, it's pretty much the same commute, a good 25 minutes, which is okay. not bad. 
All right, cool. So that'll be convenient because you can kind of be close to the school, finish up your power plant, and then basically same airport and where it is the same airport, and then just kind of migrate to another part of the airport to go actually work. Yeah, so. definitely. That's a plus. Cool. Awesome. So um, how about you? I know you started a, a new job in, in general. Yeah. Yeah. That's thanks for asking. Um, so yeah, I made a huge, huge transition, uh, last August where I left the university of Notre Dame. Um, I was there in the turbine machinery laboratory for about six and a half years and, um, I had a really good opportunity there that I was actually in, but I missed GA. So, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I actually went full time working as a AMP here at the Goshen airport here in Goshen, Indiana, which is actually where I'm at now in the hangar utilizing the uh, high speed internet here. But, um, it's going really well. Um, I've gained a lot of new experience, the opportunities for structures. And uh, I haven't done too much of that myself, but I've assisted in that. Actually behind me here, we have a, one set, a 152 that's doing some uh, firewall work and some other sheet metal work. But uh, but yeah, it's, it's going well. Uh, and uh, I actually purchased a PA-16 Piper Clipper. That was one of the advantages, I guess, going back to the airport is, is I live at a grass strip I have my own grass strip. I'm the only one there mm -hmm. and I can actually fly to work. So I've had the opportunity, maybe, I don't even know. I didn't really count, but somewhere around 10 to 12 times I've actually flown to work from my backyard, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which is just amazing. So that was one of the perks that I looked forward to and I've been able to achieve that. So it's been pretty cool to, uh, to be able to do that and just be back at the airport. So and I'm pretty sure that uh, that made the commute a little shorter from anything. Oh yeah, did yeah, <laughs> yeah. So where I live, it's um, there's a lot of. I mean, I can take back roads, but there's actually a lot of Amish buggies, and then of course mm -hmm. school buses in the mornings, and it's nice to not have to deal with any of that. And that's for sure. <laughs> so, um, but my biggest thing is, you know, I take off, and within five minutes, I can either see the airport. Obviously, when I'm going to the airport and then five minutes on the way home, I can kind of pick out my own property. When I first start flying home, just getting my lunchbox and just kind of like throwing it in the seat and mm -hmm. buckling up. It's just at that moment, I'm just like, you know, this is cool. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> right, you have to. <laughs> so, so I don't I don't think it'll ever get old. So, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's going good. We do. Uh, we have charter jets that we maintain. We have mm -hmm. Citation Encore and XLS the five sixties and, uh, we have, you know, a decent amount of pistons we work on the flight school and we're pretty busy. We're actually, um, beyond pretty busy. So we have more than we can handle and, uh, we're actually looking for some help. So, you know, say somebody walks up to you and mm -hmm. it's like, Hey man, I'm considering, uh, aircraft maintenance route. You know, I like aircraft and, uh, um, you know, what would you say to them? I guess any, maybe a sentence or two. So, um, pretty much I've, came across a couple of people recently that uh, they say they didn't know the depth of how much, how many tests and how many orders of practicals you would have to do. And I would tell somebody, you know, don't let those discourage you because you'll definitely get the information to be able to keep progressing through those tests and oral and practicals. Because a lot of people get discouraged about when they hear the requirements and things you got to pass to get your A&P. And I would say, like, don't let that discourage you, you know, if you, this is something you really want to do, go ahead and, you know, just make sure you, you study and those problems you had or way, definitely ease your mind towards heading into the field and having to do written tests and oral practical. So don't let any of that discourage you. And you're going to have some fails, some ups and downs, but you definitely just, it only matters if you keep pushing and keep trying. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. It's good advice. Um, okay. So one thing that I always say when somebody asks me that question, um, let me know what you think, but I always say aviation, aircraft maintenance, you really got to enjoy working on airplanes because um, it really should be a passion because the, the, um, the work that you do is crucial and it can't be a job and just a job. You come in and do your time 
and get out. You know, it's like, hey, you know, I think this pays pretty good. I can go to this place because they're paying this. I want to do aircraft maintenance. And they don't really know much about any mechanical anything. So that is kind of scary to me. I think that at least number one, you either have to enjoy mechanics or have mechanical background. And also in parallel with that, I think is important to just like aircraft, you know, and, and appreciate them, I think really goes a long way. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's not a, a job you go in and say, um, oh, I'm just here to do my eight hours and leave. It's a job you, like you said, you really got to be passionate and dedicated about. Because like, you know, as you know, you know, as many people stress, it's not a car that you can just pull over. This is something that you can, that's, that you really have to take serious. And, uh, you know, it's not a bad idea to, you know, forget about work and not bring work into your personal life too much. I mean, I get that. But when you're at work, it definitely needs to be the mindset of, you know, you're doing your best and everything needs to be the best it can be. And when you leave, that's fine. You don't have to think about it. But when you're there, you don't hate, need to have the mentality of, you know, okay, hate now, you know, so. Okay. All right, Kendall. Well, I really appreciate you joining again and uh, we'll follow up again. We'll do a part three sometime. So, um, look forward to that and really interested in, you know, how the, the new helicopter gig thing goes and, um, I wish you the best. All right, guys. So thanks for watching today. And if you have any questions, definitely drop those below in the comments. Kendall will jump in there. I'll jump in there. We'll try to answer those the best we can. And until next time, be safe and be blessed. And I will see you in the next one later.